So have you recovered from episode 10? Just about. Just about. Still wounded that you uh, guessed the secret track. But there we go. <laughs> so if you haven't done so, check it out. The live stream. Check out the Facebook page. It went off. 10,000 views now. Jeez. So back for episode 11. Thanks for joining. Uh, loads of new music again this week. And uh, you do know that that live stream was so sick. We're going to have to do another one. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. And what we've got now? What's this? So this one, something titled Blues and Peverlist on production on this. Large enough Pev. This one slaps a little punch, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm feeling this something different to kick the show off. So if you're digging around for track lists, remember, go on to our Instagram, In-Depth Radio. There is a little, uh, I think they call it highlights. Is it? Well, you're the, you're the tech guy. <laughs> I believe they're highlights, yeah. Check out the Instagram highlights. Our track lists are in there for all episodes. Um, so check that out if you can. So up next, we've got something also brand new in the inbox. What do, what do we have? This one is by Arkwright. Track entitled Taser. Large up all our listeners and followers. Remember, we always need your music. In depth radio UK at gmail.com. We're going to Arkwright on this.
uh, what has just been announced. Have you seen it? The new Corey Dub lineup? I am aware of this. So it's, I think it's not this Sunday, it's the next, isn't it? It's yeah. the 13th. 18th. 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 Is it 18th? 18th of November. That's it. 18th Corey Dub back to back to back to back to back to back to back. And that's at XOYO. Do you know what? We've done a massive Get Darker Party there. 2000 and... It, I'll tell you what, it was, a, it was, the, it was it? the launch party for that album. This is Dubs uh, of 2012, yeah. right there, the uh. green one. Launch party for that, so there you go, 2012. Yeah. Downstairs, yeah, it was Brilliant wicked. venue. So, Croy Dub, back to back to back to back to back. Check out uh, the lineup. It will be on Instagram and everywhere now. Oh, it's all over it. Yeah, everyone's reposting it on Instagram, so get on there and have a little look. And uh, we are streaming it live on Get Darker, so I'm not sure if I was meant to tell you that, but I'm telling you, you, telling you it anyway. Yeah, you know. Right, so... Into this. Ooh. It's always nice to get uh, new tracks from Plastician. Indeed. Out to the stish. So this one titled Skeletor. I'm going to have to build one called a uh, He-Man now. <laughs> right, let's go. Up night, I'm here to give you my banger in the bag, and I've chosen TMSV Delete This because this one's just been smashing up the place. Certified banger. Yeah, thank you, Sook Knight. Back when I was on Rinse, I used to do the new talent section yes. every week. Yes. He was used to feature him a lot. Now he's a certified banger. So really, he needs to, um, it's all down to me, is what I'm saying. Send him an invoice. <laughs> <laughs> it's too many to send. Too that many people. <laughs> that was a good uh, segment of your show. That was. I remember that well. well this is kind of filled filled that gap. Kind of. Yes. So up next, we got something 
brand new, and I think it brand new, I think it come out this week. And it's by Carnage and Day Zero. And uh, the label is Vomit Spit, I believe. Sounds disgusting. That sounds awful. <laughs> Do you want to give the title? Have you got that new Vomit Spit? <laughs> Hang on a minute, mate. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, son. I hope that is the label and I haven't just made that up. Yeah. <laughs> Esturk is the title. So have you started your Christmas shopping yet? Do you know what? It's only because I'm married <laughs> that, um, and it's because it's all done. she makes me. <laughs> I've ordered a few toys for the little kids in the family. That's about it, really. Yeah. Yeah. But um, no toys I've, got, yourself, I've got all my own toys, all my own presents sorted <laughs> out. <you know? laughs> so looking at the calendar, we will get up to episode 14 before the end of the year. I'm not going to lie, I'm pretty, pretty proud of That's us. That's good going. Pretty proud of us. This, uh, this track's got the old hand slipping in that pocket, Greg. I like this. I'm not, I'm, I can't watch. <laughs> the one hand in a pocket skank is going to become a thing, I'm telling you. Everyone at Croyd Dub, I'll see you there. Let's do a one hand in a pocket skank. Right, something new lined up on deck, deck two then. What we got? Yeah. Up next, we've got um, something by Enigma. Chuck is entitled The Eyes. Forthcoming on Dublock. Lovely. And also, I'm playing back to back with Enigma next week. DJ Bunker. Hatch and Friends. Nice. Wednesday. He's cooking up some heat right now, isn't he? Right. Buckle up for this one, Greg. Buckled. The Eyes. 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 Eyes, 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 eyes. 
Cassius, large up the Enigma dubs. That's a big track. So, up next, we've got something new from Tectonic. Ooh, produced by Boofy. Track is entitled Herbie. Like one of my favouritest films I used to watch when I was younger called Herbie, about the little uh, beetle car that came alive and drove around the city. How young was you when you watched that? I don't know, maybe 16? S- yeah, well, <laughs> so two weeks ago. <laughs> Lodging up Boofy on that. Yeah, feeling that one. That's a pinch. So we haven't done. We haven't used the filter. Jesus. See that? This is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> What do we have here? Something brand spanking new. Well, as you may or may not know, last week I played at Brixton Academy for Hatcher Friends yes. players. And this tune got dropped. An unfinished version. I'm not sure if, even if it was allowed to be played, but this tune was a wicked. I was like, who made this tune? Wrote it down. Emailed him. Bang. Here it is. The others. Shaolin. Tune. Out Ooh. to out to the others, out to decode. <laughs> I need <you> swore there. <laughs> Man, big tune, big tune. You must think first, right? Before you move. That's a bass face that isn't it? Okay, let's fade this one down then. I don't want to play too much of this, it's too fresh. Save it for another episode. You want to go on the filters, eh? (laughs) Right, interview up next. Right, so this episode of In Depth Radio, we are catching up with our good friend, 
Sim. What's happening, fella? Easy lads, yeah, same old, same old. Thanks for having me. So, um, you know, for those that may not know about you and your history, like, just explain how you got into the scene. I mean, I know you've kind of been around for a while, tinkering on production and, you know, kind of in the more frequent years, is, um, or recent years, should I say, you know, you, you've obviously had quite a few releases popping up. Um, so yeah, fill us in, mate, let us know um, how you got into it all. I started producing in about 2007, maybe a little bit earlier, but it was mostly grime and hip hop orientated. Um, I think I stopped in about 2010. But I met, um, through a mutual friend, funnily enough, um, I met a guy called Jake. My mate was like, yeah, you guys like the same sort of stuff. So I was like, cool. So I met Jake and, you know, just through knowing him, he showed me the deeper side of things, I guess you could say. So like labels like Temper, Chestplate, of course, Respect, um, you know, DMZ, uh, you know, labels of that nature. And just from there, you know, I just thought of, started listening to it and thinking, you know what, I could probably have a crack at making this sort of stuff. So I think I downloaded like Ableton or something like that and just started trying to make a few bits and bobs. And I think through that, me and him started a radio station called Focus FM, which was early internet, not FM, but you know how it is. And you know, through that, you know, we just started meeting a few different people. I think we attended uh, Uprise Audio Night, and that's where I met Seven, um, LX1, and Youngster, and you know, people like that. So it was really cool getting to know them all and stuff. And I think, you know, from observing how other producers at the time, so this would have been around 2012, 13, I sort of think, you know, I could make that sort of stuff, like I said previously. And I just sort of had a bit of a crack at it and was really enjoying it. And I think the reason that I've only probably released recently, so 2016, was I was really just sitting there trying to figure out how to get things refined in how they sound. And, you know, as you probably know, it's like a never ending learning curve. But I felt that I was at a certain level where I was ready to show the world my music. And I think from there, you know, I did the release with Temper, which was cool as a debut release. Obviously, like, you know, you look back at your old releases and you think, oh, I could have done this, I could have done that. But I don't think any producer could listen to an old track and not critique it in a certain way. And I think, you know, obviously through Youngster, I met Joe Kenzo, who's a really top guy. You know, he's helped a lot with uh, sort of my development and production and obviously was one of the first people to play my tunes. So releasing with Article was the next natural step. And then, of course, releasing with Century, which came out last week. So... Yeah, I've been fizzing around in the background and sort of, I guess now, and sort of coming more into the forefront of things. But I'm definitely enjoying it and I think, you know, the whole scene itself is growing at the moment. It's great to see. Oh, you beat me to it. I was going to ask you that. So, a debut release on Temper, how does that come around? You can't get much bigger than that for a debut release, can you? A release with Temper as my debut release was cool. Um, you know, it was a great experience. Um, you know, obviously coming up and learning how to produce and stuff, I guess being in association with that label is also something great. Um, but you know, the way that that release came about was me and Youngster made loads of ideas. We submitted the two that we felt were the best and, you know, we just submitted them to the label and they were like, yeah, great. But I think for me personally, you know, the release is cool and I appreciate it, but I also think that after I released on Temper as my debut release, it sort of, I felt a little bit lost afterwards, purely because, you know, I always wanted to release on Temper and, you know, several other labels. So for a time, I had to readjust my mind and think, right, so what's the next goal? And I think for me, the goal that keeps me going further and further is just learning more and more about the technicalities of production and how do you, you know, what all the little tricks that are out there. And, you know, a lot of the drum and bass guys that I chat to, um, you know, they always have these little tricks up their sleeve and a lot of the dubstep guys as well that I speak to, they all got little techniques. And I think that's what I dr that's what drives me, basically. So rather than, you know, releasing with the biggest labels and the best labels, I think for me, it's just having a sound which is comparable to producers that I look up to. So I think that's what kept me driving after that release. So how do you continue progression and continue with your learning? Are you self-taught? Is it from studio time perhaps with other producers and artists or is there anything online that you read? Can you give us any insight as to how you move on and move forwards? I think there's many places that you can get all this information to push you forward. So forums are really, really good. 
you know, you can go deep into like <laughs> dubstep forums or drum and bass forums or dogs on acid. You know, there's loads of places you can go to to find little bits and bobs that all add up. Also, YouTube's a really good one. Uh, I think, you know, if you watch videos that aren't necessarily about electronic music, I think you learn a lot more because it's just approaching a problem from a different standpoint. So you might see how, you know, a producer might approach compression on the drum bus or something like that. But all these little things add up. I think the best place to get information for me personally is just asking other producers. So the other day I was asking Von D, um, how do you get this particular sound on a snare? And he was like, yeah, this is how you do it. And I think just from that, you learn a lot of different bits and bobs. Um, I speak to Jack Sparrow a lot, so big up, bruv. Like, this guy teaches me stuff every day. He's, I don't know I don't know how he knows what he knows, but his, his information has helped me a lot in the sense of thinking about the placement of sounds in a mix down. Um, other people that I speak to, LX1 has helped me out a lot as well with different techniques. And I think it's just speaking to other producers within the scene. I know that a lot of producers aren't as forthcoming with their information. They like to keep their techniques down low. That's fine. I respect that. But generally, I think, you know, other producers are willing to share their techniques because it's, I could, you know, I could teach someone every single thing I know, but it's all about how you utilize that in a mix down or how you utilize that creatively. Um, someone that I speak to every day about, you know, mix downs and just everything, Mr. K, got to send a big shout to him because, you know, he's always pushing things forward and I find that he's one of the main people that I speak to because our approach to making music is very different and I find that, you know, sending him an idea, he'll come back and say, oh, maybe you could try this, maybe you could try that and it always helps the end result. So I think for me personally, it's very important to have a good a, a good bunch of mates out there you know that are in the same thing for the same reasons you are you know they just want to make good music and i think that's what helps me drive forward you know other things as well you know when i'm sitting there and i'm making music i try not to get lost so i've started doing a new technique where i sit there for 30 minutes and i try and bang out one idea in 30 minutes and i stand up and i dance around and i just have a good time and catch a vibe rather than sitting there sort of hunched over a computer with a mouth i try and let things come out because my background prior to being a producer was playing instruments. So I can play drums, I can play guitar, I can play piano, all these different bits. So I think for me personally, I've started trying to get a lot more of that into my music and just trying to make things sound a bit more organic, like keeping things a bit more off the grid. They just tend to sound a bit more natural. And I think that's the best way, really. There's a huge knowledge base out there, but I think the dubstep community in itself, especially amongst other producers, you know, I think a lot of them are very willing to share ideas and I think that's a really good thing about the whole scene is that you know if you're stuck on something the answer's always around the corner like even you Greg I was asking you the other day oh what limiter do you use what do you do here so it's always useful to ask questions um, I don't think everyone knows everything as well so it's good to just learn as much as possible and I think that's the, that's the main driving force for me is like I'll never know everything about production by any stretch but always knowing that a little bit more and that search for knowledge is what keeps me going because when I apply that to my music I feel personally that the end result is better than the last track I made so that is literally what keeps me going that and the love for music as well also got to send a big shout out to Nomine for doing his education in bass you know like that in itself is a great resource also Amit um, he's doing his audio science that's also great so there's people out there that are willing to share the knowledge so it's just trying to find that information and just applying it to your music and you just find that it just helps so much. So when you're in the studio and you're trying to catch a vibe and uh, you might find yourself dancing around the studio, you know, up on your feet, do you still do that on your own? <laughs> or only when you're doing a collaboration? Uh, I tend to do it both ways, really. <laughs> like whatever gets the best result. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, LX1 is definitely one to have a little dance around the studio. I'm not going to lie, he loves a little dance around. But fair play to him, he's catching a vibe. I think that's what it's about. If you sit there, you start getting a bit too stiff and you start thinking too much. You've got to remove all that and just have a, just have fun. That's the most important thing, is have fun. <laughs> Talking of fun, um, I keep seeing these Instagram images, um, which are very well edited and pretty hilarious. Is it you behind these? If it is, come on, confess. Well, not many people know this, but um, my nine to five is a designer, so a graphic designer slash web designer. So yeah, I am behind all these images. And 
I take great pride in the caliber of cutters I create with these because, you know, <laughs> they're very funny sometimes. But you know what? It's all for fun, isn't it? <laughs> right, that's why people are so willing to give you their secrets in the dubstep world, because if, if they don't, <laughs> you'll snitch them up. <laughs> and mate, like, if you keep going on the way you are, Lee, yeah, I'm going to Photoshop you in front of a couple of those, like, really budget CDJs, mate. It'll look like, it'll look real. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, mate, this is his setup. Dark side, yeah? <laughs> oh, mate, don't. Now you've got me worried. Let's keep this clean. <laughs> um, so, aside from graphic designing or stitching people up or music production, I know you're DJing as well. You've got Hatcher and Friends live stream next week. You're playing there um, up in Angel. So what else is next? You've obviously got the Century release, which is out now. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so Hatcher and Friends is, I think, next we uh, next Wednesday, next week. So the 14th of November. It's big up to Hatcher. There's also um, a little big back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back happening. I won't say anything else. I think the details of that are being released today. Um, yeah, there's, there's a few shows coming up. Some I can't speak about because they've not been announced yet. But, you know, that's it's, yeah, I really enjoy DJing. I mean, I'm very like grateful for being booked on certain shows, um, considering I've only been sort of DJing a sim for a year. But um, yeah, it's all good fun. Yeah, the Century release was cool. Um, so that's Century 007, like James Bond. <laughs> Sorry, terrible joke, dad joke that one. But um, yeah, I mean, that was the ideas for both of those tunes were really old, you know. And I just sort of, you know, Youngster was like, just finish them because he always has a go at me, finish them, finish them, finish them. So I have, a, I had a real issue with finishing stuff off. But I think now I've sort of ironed that problem out, and you know, it all stemmed to overthinking and all that sort of stuff. Again, just have fun, and things will just come out smoothly. But yeah, the Century release was cool. So like the A side is called Eagle Eye, which has a sort of Arabic feel. Cause you know, I'm I'm a brown person, so I have to include that heritage inside my music. <laughs> um, and then the flip to that is a tune called Old Scratch, which I guess is a bit more dubbier, but also is a bit more, I guess it has a bit of a Larry sort of bass sound. And then so in that particular tune, I've played a lot of instruments like melodica and you know, the bass guitar and stuff like that. So the release itself, I'm really happy with it. Um, and I think, you know, the response to it has been really good as well. So I'm, I'm very proud of that release. And, you know, it's the start of many other releases that will be coming. So a little birdie tells me you're uh, writing some beats with Jay Kenzo. But, um, yeah, you have to let me know if we can talk about that or not. Oh, yeah. I mean, you'll have to wait and see on that one. But, um, you know, I'm doing a release with Article at some point. Um, which will have a few tracks which a lot of people have been asking for so you know I can't wait to do that and one of them might be with him but I'm not 100% sure yet <laughs> you'll have to wait and see cool man also um, you've got a uh, little way to go with a coffee game you keep I know you keep sending me um, your little you know images yeah you'll have to come around mate have a coffee build a tune and now I can teach you the ways of uh, latte art. <laughs> yeah, that was a weird one, that picture. I've never seen my face printed in a coffee, but hey, first time for everything. But yeah, no, I mean, I definitely love to know how to make those lovely little hearts you make. And yeah, I think, I feel like you need to teach me how to make a sine wave in a coffee using, you know, your latte creation techniques. But yeah, mate, definitely up for doing a tune with you, of course. That'd be great. But obviously the coffee is a priority first definitely need to have a paddock attack juicing coffee before we start because i'll fall asleep otherwise how else am i going to dance around the studio definitely mate well that's what we'll do then we'll um we'll we'll spend four months trying to create a sine wave via latte art before we even uh fire up the computer anyway mate it's been great to catch up thanks for spending some time chatting to us and uh yeah we'll speak soon yeah, big up boys. Like it was a great little chat. Um, yeah, you know what? I have to say, like I love listening to your show and stuff. Like I'm always excited to see what the track list is. So you know, can't wait to see the next one. But big up guys, love ya. Thanks a lot, Sim. What a gent. 
good to speak to you. So here we go into a track by Sim, Eagle Eye, out now on Sentry. Go grab it. I hope he doesn't make, uh, make one of those images of us. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of hoping he does. <laughs> don't be don't. <laughs> right, check it out. think sim does stand in the studio jumping around on his own oh definitely yeah chucking coffee everywhere <laughs> drawing pictures on his stomach i was gonna say i don't know why you two don't just get instant coffee and have done with it you'd have more time to dance around the studio it's true but it's awful <laughs> but you need the energy well yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. right yeah. something else new signature trademark on this intro really out to terror danger the original once spent a uh, almost a weekend with him actually we both played at a festival in Athens that was awful Did you have good weather though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, mm, it actually, I, I don't even know. We spent the whole day in a in a bus, pretty much. <laughs> but it wasn't in Athens. I can't remember where it was. But it was like a brand new festival in Greece, and um, yeah, it weren't great. We had something like a six-hour bus journey to get there. <laughs> I think the longest journey I've done on a on a gig. I think we played at a. I played at a festival called Sata Outside Festival in Lithuania, but we flew to Riga in uh, right. Latvia. Right. And it was me, Icicle, and I can't remember who else. Who it was? And we literally got a bottle of vodka from the garage and done the whole thing in the in the oh, bus geez. on the way there. And uh, I had to play before EZ. Oh, easy. And uh, <laughs> right. And I had a. The set was good. I've got a recording of it actually. The set was good. But as soon as I saw him walk on the stage behind me, yeah. hey, I fell apart. Did you? <laughs> you know, you're thinking, <laughs> Did both hands go in your pocket? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big time. And I remember we'd done a Get Darker Christmas Party, right? Uh, 2012 at Bussy Building. I'm talking of EZ, I had EZ and Todd Edwards play. I mean, Ooh. on the same night. I'm never going to book them again, unless no. you've got a spare six-figure sum or something silly. Um, and artwork had to go on after EZ, and he actually said to me, because like... Any chance of not going on after him? <laughs> like, Sorry, mate. Someone's got to play after him, <laughs> and I'm not. <laughs> anyway, no, after legend, that. I've played before him as well. Before him's a bit better than after. How do you follow that? You know. Yeah. True. True. Okay, so we've got something else from a new label, Daku. We played uh, one of the tracks on episode ten on we the did. live stream. Go and check that out if you haven't. 
hold tight, Sook Knight, this one entitled Moonrunner, the leading track of the first release on his label. Go check it. Through telescopes, men of science constantly search the infinitesimal corners of our solar system, seeking new discoveries, hoping to better understand the laws of the universe. Commander, if you sat down on this planet, I warn you that I cannot be answerable for the safety of your ship or your crew. Big enough sook on that. From one sook to another. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We didn't get this chat list. Uh, we didn't think about this one, yeah, did we? we? Didn't, didn't so, we? <laughs> so into this, then the introduction is by Suka. Suka, <laughs> out to Suka, making some good music. This one entitled "Light Extinguished," forthcoming dub tribute. Yes, shouts to Olivia. Big up Andrew. Thanks for sending it, guys.
out to Suka. Feeling this one, mate. Light extinguished. So what are you going to order tonight, Lee? What are your taste buds telling you? Something spicy. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I wonder what people think of us posting our picture of our food after every single episode. I'm sure they're thinking, I'd love to be sitting opposite <laughs> them. Although episode 10 was pretty cool. So if you haven't checked out Instagram, do so. So we recorded episode 10, live stream, excellent show. Fantastic. And... Um, then we went out for a curry, and it was uh, us, Jay Kenzel, Kenzel, Ash, Ash Attack, Ash Attack, and then Chrome Star N Type. Thought I'd just pop in. That's it. Lovely. That's lovely. Had some beers and some great food. We're going again. <laughs> Tonight it's just me and you. <laughs> Romantic. <laughs> So this is episode 11 of In-Depth Radio. Thank you for joining. If it's your first time, welcome. And remember, check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes podcast, Mixcloud, Facebook page, Twitter. It's everywhere. Ooh. Wait, I'm going to go and get my jacket and my scarf. This one's cold. Winter's definitely here, isn't it? <laughs> I like this. I need to put your beers in the fridge. This one entitled Stutter Dub. Saplio. Is it Saplio? Yeah, Saplio on a production. Thanks for sending. Really like this. So this is another one fresh out the inbox. So we check it all the time. in depth radio UK at gmail.com. Send us your music. Nice and simple. So next track, gotta big up the uh the Duplock gang. For hooking us up as always. This one entitled Japan Digital. Produced by 207. Looking forward to this one.
We've got some bangers on this episode. Mate, this is a chalk. So, big enough 207. How's this for a bit of a uh, trivia then? I'm sure back in 2014, 207 appeared on Get Dark TV for episode 240 or 241, representing Croatia. I'll have to check that, but I think I'm right. We got 207. Long time no see, sir. Salute. Okay, what we got next? So, Epnu is a producer. Yeah, right? not heard of, not familiar with this producer. Goes, yeah, by the name Epnu. The track is entitled Sick. Let's see if it's sick then, shall we? Yes, I'm ready. So, we've had a track called Sick and also Vomit Spit on one episode. So getting a bit gritty. I know, yeah, people getting <laughs> a bit vile. Oh, vile. Did bring the sirens, sirens with you this week, did you? No, nah, I'm going to dig them out. We should program them into this <laughs> contraption yeah. and be good, wouldn't it? There's loads of buttons. We don't use any of them, do we? It's got to be a little sampler bit. Right, let's check it out. Sick by Epnu. <laughs> Hold tightly, Epnu. I like that. I really like that. So, before we get into our secret track, <sighs> and if I remember correctly, it's 1 0. No, it's 1 1. Because you got the Koki yeah, Molten track back in episode it's one, one. 7 or 8, whatever. But you did have some help. But you did guess it. I did guess it. I would have, I actually would have got it straight up. Okay. It's uh, all right. Might not have got the label. It was Tectonic, wasn't it? It was, yeah. yeah it but was it, well, that's not part of the puzzle. No. So last week's secret track was uh, Scream and Low for 28 Grams. That's a big tune as well. Mm-hmm. But obviously, Jay Kenzo was on the episode. He did help a little bit, but I'll take the point. So it's 1 1. Um, right, this right, is this one the more uh, then. Let's check this go. out. VGB on the buttons. Track is entitled Fearless. Just like you, Lee. Absolutely fearless. Just spiders, though, isn't it? <laughs> Do you know I've got worse as I got older? Serious? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've gone the opposite way. No, I'm a become a bit of a fairy. All right. I think it's because I've got I've got kids. It's like, well, you can't you've got to show them who's boss. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> my kids like, go on, you get the spider. 
Is that alright? my bike. Go on, pick it up. My best mate's uh, little son turned nine the other day and he's got a little dragon for his birthday. Nice. Which is like the size of a kind of a gecko. Not, you know, right, okay. Not. A bearded dragon? Uh, don't know. It's not okay. really big. It's probably not even that scary. But did I hold it? Nah. <laughs> not the nine-year-old holds it. Of course. Yeah. But uh, nah. Fair enough. We won't judge you. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> Into this then. VGB Fearless. This one's got a big subwoofer on the bottom of this, isn't it? Yeah. Nice skippy garage vibe and all. So, it's that time. I'm ready. Focused. So remember, In-Depth Radio, every other Wednesday, 9am. Without fail, we've not been late once. That's true. So give us a little subscription to the channels for the latest in dubstep and underground music. It's that time. I'm ready. So we need the artist and the label. No, no. the artist and the title. Artist and the title. And if you get the label, I'll buy you curry for you. <laughs> I was going to say I'll buy you really tonight. wrong, really wrong, <laughs> So we need the artist and the title. Let us know in the comments if you would have got this. Here we go. Ah, this is Casper. <laughs> oh, oh, bit easy. It's that title though. See, I want to say something like, like Shaolin. It's not, is it? It's not Shaolin, no. Like Emperor. Nope. China, something. Go on. Ah, <laughs> oh, is it quiet? <laughs> is it bamboo flute? Nope. Is it something flute. Nope. No. <laughs> Dang. Violin, something. Yes. Yeah. Oh man, what's it called? Oh, I cut this to dub. That's how I know. Big chart. It's not just called violin dub, is it? Or like ethnic violin. Hey, uh, man. No? It is something violin. <laughs> Out on dub police. Oh, well, obviously. Cockney violin. <laughs> Did I give it away? No. Because I said double no. no, no, no. Yes, cockney violin. I was just thinking, they used to, cause he used to call his stuff crazy things, didn't he? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> I don't know. Pine so, Ash, stuff like that. <laughs> so, yes, 2-1 oh, to you then. man. Nearly had you with that. I know. I thought I was going to struggle with that. So, cockney violin, Casper on production, out on dub police. Oh, I would guess 2007. Oh, maybe. maybe. Yeah. Big tune, though. Out to Gary. We should get him on the show, actually. We should yeah. Have a little chat with yeah, uh, absolutely. He's grafted. Casper. Good track, oh. isn't it? Yeah, man. Big tune. Big, big tune. Yeah, that's what I'm... Yeah, yeah. I remember cutting this one. Got this on a 10-inch dub plate somewhere. But the only 10-inch you have got, mate. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. So everything else is above that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> 
trust you to go there. Tell you. Oh no, mate. So that's us done then. Another fantastic episode. So thank you, everyone. We will see you back here in two weeks. We will and get us your music in depth radio UK at gmail dot com. com. Yes. And thank you, Sim. Good to chat to you earlier. And out to Suk Knight for the banger in the bag. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye.